Welcome. I am Michael DeVels. This is the Powder Group Conversations. Today we are with Moises Ramirez on art and artistry. I always want to thank our sponsors because without them, we are nothing. We do not have these programs without them. We are sponsored for the Powder Group Conversation Series by Cinema Secrets, Beekman 1802, Omnia, Scandinavia Muse, Beauty Pro, and Senna Cosmetics. Thank you to all of those brands. And thank you to Moises for being with us. First of all, happy last day of Pride Month. Happy Pride. I mean, this has been, this has been a great month. We, every, we have been celebrating, man, because coming out of this pandemic and people are happy and they're positive and they're joyful. Um, and it's been really nice to see so many companies and so many, so many of our brand partners really celebrating our LGBTQ plus community. So, um, you know, as I explained to you, we are, we spent the entire month of June, all of our conversation series has been focused on artists and industry experts from our LGBTQ plus community. So I'm grateful that you are going to be here to wrap the week, the month up with me. Um, you know, for those of our artists who are not that familiar with your work, number one, they are. <laughs> number two, if they're not, for some strange reason, because this will be on YouTube later, maybe they don't know who you are. Um, tell us a little bit about how you first, really, just a quick story about how you first got into makeup or art, which came first, the art or the makeup artistry? Uh, yeah, the art came first. I was, um, I've always been kind of creative and um, in high school, I really got into like drawing and mainly drawing, I was doing like a lot of black and white, like charcoal work. Um, and then when I went to uh, college, I got into painting. So I got into color and like loved it. I couldn't get enough of it. And then during that time I was working at a coffee shop and I was by a Mac store. So I was always like fascinated with all like the colorful makeup and all the theme days they used to have. I don't know if they have them anymore. Um, but I was doing stuff that was like very like beauty illustration-ish, you know? So that everything had an element of beauty to it. Like I didn't know what it was, but it was like shadow and red lips and blush. And I used to paint like a lot of portraits of different women and uh, even guys that had like a little bit of like, I used color a lot. So I had to kind of like resemble blush or mm. like it wasn't like eyeshadow, but there was blue around the eyes. And, the macros were like always like you should, we would be great at makeup so i was like okay whatever but then i ended up getting a job with them they one of the managers was like we have like a i think it was like a 12 hour or 14 hour position and i was like oh whatever but then the girls were like people you don't know what mac is like people are dying to work at mac you you need to like you know they wouldn't just tell you that to tell you that so I applied for it and that's how I kind of got into the makeup part of it. So it was, it was basically an accident. <laughs> yeah. And um, they like begged you, they yeah, begged like, you to come and work for them. No, 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 not that. I would have, but I, I couldn't, like once I started, I was like, oh my God, what did I get myself into? Mm -hmm. Like this is, once I had to link them together, like, oh, this is like, once I started like, learning from other artists like oh because i was doing like painting and they were like no that is way too much you know makeup so i had to like learn how to do like the beauty and then kind of like connect the art to it eventually so when was your you got into makeup <clears throat> your first work was retail and you came at it from an artist's perspective, a painter's perspective, right? Yeah. So as you said, which I think is amazing, I, I can imagine you at Mac on Christopher, like doing like painting faces, <laughs> like really killing it. And then going like, pull it back a little bit. So when did it, when did you, you know, you pulled it back because you had to, right? Because in order to do beauty makeup, you have to pull it back a little, but then you also then went forward again into more painterly work. So, so how is it that you found your style? Because you have a very particular style. It's, it's beautiful makeup, it's clean skin, but then there's some powerful, beautiful color element and texture. So how long did it take you from the time you started working to the time you discovered sort of what is the Moises Ramirez style of makeup artistry? Uh, well, I, I think it was like I, and so I moved to New York. Mm -hmm. And then I moved to New York and I was like, I started doing shows and started learning more about like creative makeup and then even then I kind of was 
told or you know advice to learn how to do like the cleanest most beautiful skin first and then kind of like throw the artist element into it so i think it was that until like i realized that i had to have like a a, ca a prime canvas like it had to be like the cleanest canvas out there and then i could like one stroke of paint would complete the whole look or like a, a pot like throwing powder in somebody's face you know it would complete the whole look so i think it i mean i i guess i'm still working on on my style like, you know i don't I, I know i people say i have a style but i feel like i'm always continuously like changing what i know and then that's continues to, my style continues to grow and evolve i guess well, I, th I think a style can evolve, certainly. And, and I think all, you know, as an artist, as a painter and illustrator, <clears throat> excuse me, as well as as a makeup artist, you know, obviously, number one, you probably get bored if you did the same exact thing over and over again yeah. every time, right? But also, as an artist, as an artist's artist, um, we, we improve, we change, we shift, we find something we like better than what we're doing, right? Um, but I think something about having style, I had this conversation with an artist a couple weeks ago. They said, I don't have a style. I said, every time your social media, every time your Instagram comes through my feed, I know it's your work. I said, you have a style. And I think that's the same thing a little bit with you. If I see something come through my Instagram that looks a certain way, I'm like, oh, let me, let me pause and look at this for a minute because it's, it's obviously Moises' stuff. I think that um, so many people struggle to find their voice as an artist. Do you think that's important to have a style that's very recognizable? Or do you think being more fluid and open as an artist is more important? I mean, I think if you concentrate too much on like being like, this is my style, like you just put yourself on this single road of like not stepping away. You know what I mean? I think being more <clears throat> knowing what you like. So whether it's the medium or you know, like, oh, I like texture, I like color, and then like being more fluid with that, you know, maybe I just like to use purple and like, but use it in so many different ways. It's still your style, but you're kind of like navigating through it. Mm -hmm. kind of it does make sense. And actually, as you said that, I'm like, wait, does that apply to art and painting as well as makeup? Yeah, I think, I, I mean, I think I always like to try, and even with like, I love using like a, a white background, like, uh, but now I'm like starting to use color, like I, just changing that alone changes my whole work. So I guess it does look like my style, but it still looks a little bit different. Is that, um, because again, as I'm looking down the list of who's with us, I'm saying, oh, that they paint, they draw, they're great makeup artists, but they draw, they do other artistic things and they're here to listen to you because we all look at you and go, wow, if I could do both the way Moises does both, that's pretty amazing, right? So do you shift your style and energy for your own, I'm gonna call it entertainment, not necessarily, but for your own purposes or do you shift that because you feel like either something maybe wasn't, um, an art series that you painted or drew didn't get received as well as you'd like it. So you're like, oh, let me shift out of that. Or is it, I'm bored doing that, so I'm going to shift out of it? I think it's a combination of both. It's also to like a learning kind of experience. Like if I'm working on even on something and I'm halfway, let's like say I've done already like five paintings in that mm -hmm. and something's not working, but something completely different, like one corner of the, of the painting looks like is working, then I'll start turning that corner into like a full painting. So I'm always kind of looking for things that are working, not working, and necessarily for people, the viewer, but for me. Like, you know, I'm not, it's, I don't know, I'm, I'm not as concerned, maybe I should be not anymore with the viewer, you know what I mean? Like people are gonna love it and people are gonna hate it. I, I at the end of the day, I'm here, I'm alone, I'm working on my work. And I have to enjoy it and I have to be happy. What What is that balance though, from an art and commerce standpoint, right? Because someone has to like the work, whether it's yeah. makeup artistry or painting in order for them to invest financially in it, which then supports your career, right? So what is that, where's that balance? Um, 
where you say, okay, so I'm painting for myself and it's well received. So now I'm going to keep going with that work and push that forward. Um, you know, I don't believe there's such a thing as an artist, artistic sellout. I think there are people who um, make things that are well received so that they can make a living doing what they love. And I think yeah. that's great. What do you feel about that idea of, you know, sort of over creating of a specific style because it's going to keep selling? Yeah, I mean, it's also too, yes, making like selling it feels amazing, but it's also like receiving it, like people actually loving it in the comments that, you know, sometimes are, I mean, not to sound cheesy, but sometimes are worth more, yeah. you know, like just like people actually, you know, I've gotten this last year, I've been surprised how much work I've sold and also like how many people like, are like, oh, the colors make me so happy, like, it brings joy to my life, your post. Like I get these messages that are worth so like so much, you know, to me. And it makes me want, I feel like I'm on the right kind of path because I'm also enjoying what I'm doing. All right. How do you um how do you, you know, as an artist, <clears throat> excuse me, as a makeup artist or an artist, um, and I'm clarifying them just because we're talking about both your painterly, your painting and your illustration, as well as your makeup work as a makeup artist and an artist, how do you, um, stay unique and evolve your, your style and your work in a way that still maintains your voice as an artist, but also then changes it up a little bit. So maybe it is more interesting to you, but also more appealing to a different viewer. I mean, I guess just con like I said, what we were saying earlier, just continue to like create work and finding those different. I mean, sometimes I put up like um, posted some things that I'm like, oh, this that I think it might be like not as good or like not bad. But then I'm like surprised that people love it. You know what I mean? So then I kind of revisit it and I'm like, well, what is it about this that I that I or I that, appe that appeals to, to people out there, you know? So then I kind of rework it and kind of keep moving with that idea. So I continue to like rework work. And I think that helps like keep with my style, you know what I mean? Sure. What, what's your starting point um, when you're, let's, let's talk, you know, I know you've already talked about with um, makeup artistry, you know, getting that skin right. Of course, that's like the thing every creative artist wants to do get that skin perfect so then they can use it as a canvas and do something interesting but from an uh, from an art standpoint from a painting standpoint what is your starting point uh usually i sketch I sketch a lot in like a journal or like a sketchbook and i'll take i'll do smaller sketches then i'll work a little bit bigger so i have like a news like newsprint or like you know cheaper paper so then i'll make like a big sketch and see how it would look in a bigger size. And then after that's when I start kind of like just layering like a bunch of color. And then no, most of the time it doesn't, there is some kind of like blueprint of the original sketch, but most of the time it, it changes so much that it's necessarily not the same thing anymore. So it kind of changes throughout. So but usually you, normally my starting point, it would be like a, a sketch or an idea I had and then roughly sketched out and I throw a bunch of paint kind of colors. And then from there, I kind of like pull colors out and kind of layer textures and color. I think that's, that's an aha moment for a lot of people because I think people look at someone who works the way you work um, and even just watching and seeing when you did the stuff for us during the creatives uh, program at the powder group, you know, just pulling out a piece of paper and just kind of drawing and just kind of starting with some watercolor and just making some beautiful work, like just not even thinking about it. And I think that um, as a not as not Moises, <laughs> we go, oh, it must be so easy. You just kind of look at a canvas and you start and you draw a beautiful eye or beautiful lips, but to know that there's a process I think that's one of the most fascinating things about museum retrospectives of artists. You know, you look at Picasso's study of, study two of, study three of, and then an, an image that was smaller that was painted, and then the big full-size image he did. And you think, wow, okay. You think art genius, brilliance in artistry just is something that just comes out and happens, but it's planned. Yeah, and also there is those moments where like I, 
I can just go straight to a large canvas and start like and let it kind of evolve, you know, but if it wasn't for those other paintings that were planned, there would never be that kind of confidence or like, you know, like to just go and do it. Like if it wasn't from like, like other paintings that I've worked on, I would, I don't think I would have like the courage to just get like a five by five canvas and just start painting. Okay. Because there's moments where I just come down here and pour about a bunch of paint and just, especially that's what I love, like water, the watercolor stuff, because there's no, I kind of lose a little bit of control. Mm -hmm. You know, like you can't control those inks, like if they move a certain way, you know, and when I started working with ink and watercolor, it was really hard because I realized how I'm a little more controlled and I, I thought I was more free, you know, because I usually do a lot of big strokes and yes, I am compared to other artists, but once I started doing like the ink and the watercolor, I was definitely, I felt like I was losing too much control, but then I kind of enjoyed that aspect of the, of the process. Mm. I like that. I mean, your watercolor work is some of my favorite stuff that you do. Um, I, I'm looking at the eye behind you on, over your left shoulder, and I'm, I'm assuming that's a watercolor and ink. But yeah. um, I love those pieces, and I love the the there is a freedom to them. And you know, as opposed to the beautiful lip work that you do and the canvases behind you as well, which do well, they are free, and there's lots of big stroke, and there's some you know some uh, 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 distortion of of shape and energy. There's also you got lines there that are you're creating and staying within them. You're coloring in yeah. the lines in some way, whereas watercolor is yeah. like, sorry, I know you thought you were going to color in the lines. Yeah, but you don't. <laughs> but you're not. <laughs> it's it's also fun. too like the watercolor stuff. I feel it makes me just have to get it all at once. Mm -hmm. Like get it all out at once. Like I have to if I'm doing like I normally when I oh well you saw the one. I normally don't. When I do these, I work like in a few of them so I can constantly rotate them and I can continue working on them while they're kind of semi wet and all the colors kind of flow into each other. And then that's it, they're done. Because if you go back, it almost, for me, for my own work, not in general watercolors, but it, it makes me feel like they're too, like I, they're too thought out, like too layered. Like I, like I went back and fi like fixed things, you know? Mm -hmm. When, when do you know, and, and this is a good point to ask this question, you're talking about, you know, when something, you know, you're going back and fixing something, you know, when do you know when to stop when you're doing a piece? Let's talk first about art. And then I want to talk about makeup, because that creative makeup, I think, is an even harder thing to know when to stop with. But with, with, when art, when you're painting or drawing or using watercolor, when do you know you're finished with a piece? Sometimes I don't. But I think when I when I have that doubt is when I stop. When I'm like, oh, should I do more? Like if I question myself, then I don't know, for some reason automatically I stop and I put it away. And I have to like, there's why I, I sometimes like, I don't have like, like my other wall of my studios complete like towards my desk. So this way, like it's completely empty just because I don't like to have things up, like to keep looking at things. So I like kind of put it away and then later I go back to it and then I look at it and I'm like, okay, it was done or, oh no, I needed like mm. one extra little coat. <laughs> I, I think that's again, very different from makeup because you can't put the, put the model away for a while, right? <laughs> You can't put their footer away, but, but I love that. And I think that's a big moment too, for people who are artists, because to put something away and say, I don't know if I'm done yet might be, but I'm going to put it away and I'm going to do something else. And then I'm going to come back to it. And when I look at it again, I'm going to figure out, okay, am I done or not? Maybe, you know, the fact that you pull things out and maybe multiple times, I think that's a big moment for artists to think, you know, who think you're supposed to sit down, do a piece and then finish it. So that's great. And also too, like for me, what has worked is working on multiple things, whether it's like the same watercolor paper, that's like 11 by 15 cutting, like 20 of them and like, you know, start working and, or having this and an illustration. Sorry, my dogs. We love dog backgrounds. Um, or having like multiple canvases, or like, I mean, like in my floor right now, I mean, you can't, I can't turn it to my computer, but I have like, I don't know, like 20 little tiny paintings that I just started just 
I've never worked that small, but I'm doing like little eight by eight. So like I have those that I know I'm gonna be rotated into all of this. And when you're working like that, do, are you working on all eight, all those pieces at a time? Like you're going in and layering and going into the next step or are you kind of bouncing around? Yeah, yeah I kind of bounce around and see like, I usually like to, like if I'm using, uh, have a palette and then I'm like here, it kind of almost, I treat it sometimes like this, like a full painting. You know, like if you imagine like it was a big painting and cut into 10 little pieces, I'm kind of like, you know, drumming everywhere, you know, it's kind of this. I love that, of, I love that. Um, it just, that's what works for me, you know? I, I had to learn because before I did do that, I had to, I felt like I had to sit down and like finish it and it almost, it, I wasn't happy at the end, you know? putting all those hours and working like this for me is kind of, it's easier. It's interesting. Cause you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like a closet artist. Like I like always wanted to be an artist artist. So I try, I dabble in stuff. Wendy's here and she pushes me to, to, to do stuff. She's watching um, and to try stuff. And we work with Pam in Provincetown a lot. And one of the things I do is very funny. You said, I feel like, Oh my God, maybe I'm actually an artist. Cause I do exactly that. I go in and I take like a whole bunch of pieces at once and I do a, a, P, a part of it first, and then I go back in and do another thing on all of them. And then I go back and do another thing on all of them. And then it gives me that feeling like I'm creating a collection instead of yeah. creating one piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, yeah. It's like having them all kind of, at the end, they're all kind of linked together. And even if you didn't mean like to, for them to be connected, they, they are. Yeah. I mean, they are connected because I, I made them all, but, uh, the, the, the color palette, the textures kind of all flow together. I love that. That's awesome. Um, I want to talk the same question but about makeup artistry real quick, because with makeup artists who are creative artists, who are taking that beautiful skin and then just taking that little bit of product and dripping it on the face or smearing it across the eyes, how do you know when you're done, when you're doing creative makeup? Like I step back. Well, first I step back a lot to see like, what is if you you know sometimes we work like this you know like the face is here and we're like you definitely one of the things that I do in artwork that I I brought onto makeup was always stepping back looking at it from all angles like you know what I mean because yeah um but there's I mean I've told you this before I think there's many times where I I've already I, I put something on and then I put a little more and I'm like oh that was just too much and you know they're like asking me is she ready you know so i just sometimes i just put more <laughs> so okay wait so you now we know the secret yeah, like, wait we know the secret if you think you went too far <laughs> go so farther like, wait i was like okay like i kind of have to change it with you know because i don't want to leave it at that like doubting myself moment where it's like oh, no like i want to i mean even though it happens I, I mean every artist out there you doubt yourself like daily yeah. but you kind of just have to be somewhat satisfied with what you did. <laughs> I love that though. You're like, shit, keep going, keep going. All right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's but right. um, it has to, for me, I, I, it has to look like complete, like the whole, you know, you're not work. I'm not working alone when I work with a model right. or makeup. It's like, there's hair, there's like, uh set there's a set designer there's like clothing and i always try to like make sure that it's not just about the, the makeup that, that it's all like i mean of course if i'm doing macro and it's like a beauty shot then yes like it's but when it's like a full-on like shot then i make sure that i don't take over so like i i kind of like pause and check with the hair and like Sounds like sounds like when you're creating creative makeup for a, something where it's not just about the makeup that you're saying, take a breath, don't go too far, step back from it, make sure it suits everything that's happening around it. And then if you need to go in a little bit more, go in a little more. That's great. It's great advice. Um, I also too, like another thing for that is I, I make sure that if there's something like that's going to be in a one kind of done, a lot of times I do it on set. Okay. Like, so I bring everything and I just have like 
at that moment, I just add that last kind of like touch to it. And then, you know, there's no going back. Um, you work, you work like the way you work and that, that made me think of this, like, you know, I'm thinking of some stuff that I know that you've done where like, you look at that and there's such beautiful textural elements in an, in a makeup or textural elements in, in a painting. Do you, when you're starting out or during the process, do you go, this is going to be about texture or this is going to be about color or shape, like all those elements of art, right? Color, shape, texture, um, light and shadow. Like, do you approach a painting or a makeup thinking that in advance? Um, I suppose it depends on whether you've thought, thought through the makeup design and designed it in advance too. But even in the design process, do you say, I want this to be about texture or I want this to be about color or do you just kind of evolve a look? Uh, yeah, I, I start with sometimes, but I do start with like, oh, I want it. Like, for example, like I was reading this story recently and it was just like metallics, everything metallic. So I had to pull everything metallic I had, um, you know, to, it was uh, like a macro close-up shot and it was, everything was going to be just metallic, like matte metallic. So we get there, I do all this stuff and it's just not, the lighting's not working. So then I had to go and like, I wasn't going to take it off. So I was, I changed everything and I was like, well, we're going to throw some gloss under and some like gloss spray. And like, it totally changed into this like glossy, textury, metallic kind of thing. So yes, I kind of start with something, but a lot of times it just changes. Um, especially if it's makeup and it's like close up makeup and it's, I can play and I have, I can create and I have more freedom, then I will, I will, I will change. Yeah. Um, with your mediums for your painting and your drawing, you were saying you work in watercolor, you work in inks, you work in acrylics. What other mediums do you work in? Um, What's your favorite medium? Spray paint. I, I used to love to paint with oils. I just don't have the ventilation space now. So I haven't, I haven't painted oil since I moved to New York. Um, but I use a lot of spray paint, like charcoal pastels, oil pastel, like oil crayons, uh, markers. I have like tons of markers. Like I just also like to, I, sometimes I put everything in front of me and I, I like to do this with makeup too. So I can just kind of like, you know, if the spray paint is, I'm missing like a color or like I grab this over here and I just use this. I mean, it's just kind of whatever I need, I like to have it all in front. So necessarily like I'm gonna do this in just watercolor. Sometimes I have like a spray, spray can and I just do like a little and it works, you know, and sometimes it doesn't. So I just kind of cover, add other stuff on top of it. But I try to do more like, like a mixed media, you know. I remember this story you did for On Makeup Magazine, which was beautiful. Um, and it was definitely mixed medium. Like you were using, you could see that there were different things. There's some photography elements. There was um, definitely um, some some painting. There's some some dripping paint. There was some really beautiful elements. Do, do you work mostly with mixed mediums? Or do you, I mean, you said you kind of put it all out there and kind of reach for what feels right. Yeah. Um, I'm feeling like very top chef, right? Very like, <laughs> like you just kind of kind of grab what you grab and like make it all work in the basket, right? Yeah, I, I, I enjoy working in like, even if it's a watercolor, I'll throw like a, some markers, some highlighters, and yeah, yeah, yeah. spray paint. Um, I like even, I mean, I've been starting to do some digital stuff too. So I taking all that, then photographing, then put into the computer and adding like digital elements to it or like, yeah like moving elements, like animated elements into it. And I enjoy all that, like just mixing it all together. A lot of it I had to like teach myself, you know, like the digital stuff I've been like kind of watching a lot of videos and just. Let me ask you a question. Um, how long did it take you to figure out if I use watercolor, I can draw over it. If I use spray paint, I can do this over it. Or did you just kind of like keep playing with it and then sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't work, you get rid of it. What's that yeah. process like? It's, I don't like overthink it as much or try not, try not to overthink it as much. Mm. Um, I, I remember one time this, I had a teacher and he was like, 
uh, he told me, he's like, you're not Michelangelo, just do it. Like, you know, like he, he's like, it's just, it's just a piece of paper, just put it out there, you know? And I always remember that because sometimes it's like you over, yes, we're artists and we're putting all our love and passion out there, but sometimes you just have to, it's part of the practice, it's part of the process to just throw paint and like move it and rip the paper up and put another paper out and start, you know? Yeah. And I think those moments really help help you as an artist and will help your work. Like um, your, 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 like your work will grow more from those moments. Mm. Um, it's like you're hitting me right in the heart with all of this. It's amazing. I love it so much. Um, I, I would before we wrap, I got a couple more minutes, and I just want to ask you. You know, you just did a recently did a collaboration uh, with B3 with Julia Dalton Brush. Uh, absolutely beautiful. You found an amazing way to incorporate her product energy with your artistic style. You know, how important for you when you're partnering with a company or working for a client that's a commercial client where your work is going to represent that brand, is it that it's in alignment for you? Like, how do you choose like a brand or how do you decide if a brand is the right partner or if a retailer who wants a makeup line, who wants to work with you and have you do something for them? How do you decide that? Well, I think also I, I want to make, like I always try to make sure that that they understand that I'm the right artist for them. You know, like I I, I had um, someone recently wanting to do a collaboration and uh, they wanted black and white images, and I said, like, have you seen that? Yeah, well, they gave me all references to my work and then they were like, but we wanted in black and white. And I just, I, I mean, I had to pass because if you're not understanding me as an, yes, it would have been great, you know, but you're not understanding me as an artist. You want me to do something completely different. Right. You know, so I think I look for that sometimes, like if there's a connection between them and my work and what I have to offer and they understand where I'm coming from, you know, and of course there's work where I have to, like change a couple things, but I, I I want the client to understand this is what I do. And most of the time, but that I was like, you know. It's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of a little off, right? Yeah. And also too, like, I also like to work with other artists. And I don't know if all artists are like this, but I feel like I like to work with, like, you know, with B3, like it's, like it's, another artist creating and we come up and we made this amazing collection it was it is amazing absolutely um two more questions i promise i'll let you go in a minute um okay. speaking of other artists you know you are such an inspiration to so many all everyone in our community but our tpg pro our the powder group community loves their moises and um you know when we look at someone that inspires us it's always interesting to me to know from an artist standpoint, a fine artist standpoint, who were your influences as painters or as, as illustrators? Who were the people that you said, when I grew up, I wanna be like, and maybe not artistically that style, but this is in inspirational to you. There's, I mean, so many, for so many different ways. Like, I mean, like if you follow me, you know, I love Frida Kahlo and I, yeah, I love her work, but I love her story. Um, there's also like, Francis Bacon, I love, he, I love his texture. It's nothing, like it's so dark compared to like what I do, but like the texture and his use of color. Um, I just went to see, which I didn't know much about her work, um, Alice Neal at the Met, which if you haven't gone, I recommend everybody to go see this show. Um, her portraits are like, I'm obsessed, like they're in like, so beautiful and the color and the texture um so i always continue to find new like new artists i mean i had seen uh alice's work before but just going to see it like i started like looking for all her stuff and like reading about her so i think it's just so many so many artists um the the, the discovering had a hard time with that word discovering a new artist like alice neil does that influence sort of what comes next for you or is it just something that you 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 put in your backpack and go, all right, I feel good, I feel inspired, I'm gonna go back and do me? Or does it influence your future work? 
Yeah, because I really miss doing portraits. I used to do portraits before, like a lot, and seeing her portraits, I was, I was like, well, I miss painting people, like full people, huh? you know, like every day. Um, because before I used to do a lot of portraits, like large, big, you know? So it made me think of like, just kind of question why I haven't been doing them. And, you know, just, it kind of got things rolling. <laughs> I love that. Well, I, well, listen, I can't wait to see what comes next. I can't wait to see. My last question for you, I always love to ask something like this with our, our artists uh, that we speak with. If you were going to give a little bit of advice, like one piece of advice to people who are, who are wanting to, to push themselves a little further in the fine arts and painting and drawing and creating art outside of makeup artistry, what would your advice be to those folks? Uh, well, I mean, go to museums. We have some of the best museums. Like they're right. I mean, if you're in New York, <laughs> like go or you're wherever you are, go to a museum, go to a gallery. Galleries are free. You can walk in. Um, even if you don't know anything about the artist or you don't know the artist at all, just go. If you see an, something you like or something that you are that, that pulls you in, take that name down. Take a little picture. You know, you have your phone of the name and research it. Uh, buy a sketchbook like they don't they don't cost much it's like a coffee you know you can get it doesn't have to be like a fancy buy markers buy pens like just doodle and it doesn't don't try to make something just you know just do scratches on it you know and eventually you'll start to like find things that work for you your hand and your brain will kind of connect and then keep going keep going keep going yeah. Just keep going. Excellent. I, I can't imagine better words to end on, but keep <laughs> going. Amazing. Yeah. Us, we all need art right now. It's like the time to do it, you know? It is. Absolutely. It is. And, uh, and you know, we're coming out of a pandemic. Um, hopefully we stay out of the pandemic, um, you know, uh, but this is a time I think people are rethinking what's important to them, what inspires them, what they want to spend their time doing. Um, and I think that um, you have been such an inspiration to me personally and to our community. So thank you for, thank you. for helping put all of us on a path toward art and artistry. Uh, thank you, Moises Ramirez. I appreciate thank you. you. Thank I'm you for having me here. Absolutely, always. I'll, I'll have you every day. I yeah. Every day you can come on and talk with me. I, Guys, do, I do want to do, I wanted to tell you, like I want to do a, like a, uh, just for your people, like I want to do like a life digital drawing stuff, but I'll send you more info. Maybe your group can be like something I tested on. I I don't know, guys. What do you think? Does yeah. the power of like being tested upon by <laughs> about a drawing program? I think I'm getting yeses in the chat function. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. I just realized there was a chat here too. I was like, oh wait. <laughs> Yeah, I, don't get distracted. You could we could say we could we could go through all of the your amazing comments too. I'll send them all to you. Um, you're awesome. Thank you again for inspiring us, and thank you for being with us and doing so much with us at the Powder Group. We appreciate you. This has been the Powder Group Conversations. I am Michael Develos with Moises Ramirez on art and artistry. Thank you to our sponsors once again: Cinema Secrets, Beekman 1802, Omnia, Scandinavia Muse, Beauty Pro, and Santa Cosmetics. Thanks, guys. This will be on YouTube starting tomorrow. I hope you'll check it out again. Share it with your friends. Uh, tell everybody come and be inspired by the one and only Moises Ramirez. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate you. Bye, Bye guys. guys.